Hello everyone, thanks for coming back for another episode of Reaper Minis TV. We're going to get started this time with some chronoscope releases. First up we have a motorcycle, and this comes in three pieces. You get the front wheel, the body or chassis of the bike, and then the forks and the handlebars as a separate piece. And every bit of it needed a little bit of cleaning. There's extra bits of metal from the casting process here and there. So you're going to spend a little bit of time on every piece. But it goes together easily enough. Uh, no flaws or anything like that in the figure. I'm just, right now, I wouldn't say at a loss, but sort of at a loss of what to use it for. It doesn't come with a rider, and unless there's going to be packs of riders that come out later, I have no idea whether there are or not. I think that it's probably suitable for a diorama to sit next to one of the biker figures that Reaper has in the chronoscope line, but I would like to see some generic rider poses, maybe legs and or various legs and upper bodies to go on motorcycles. Next up we have Bonzo the Killer Clown, and in this blister we get the body of the clown, and it's a pretty typical circus kind of clown. He's wearing the big overalls and the frilly collar and has the giant buttons and big flower on his lapel. He's carrying what looks to be a cream pie in his left hand. And then on a separate sprue, we have two head and two right hand options. And you can make Bonzo into a killer clown or a more regular clown. And we'll try to look at the sprue, get focused in on it. You've got the bicycle horn in one hand and a meat cleaver as the other option. And on the sprue, you can still see the happy face, or the regular clown face. And then, I've already taken off the sprue, where it sort of fell off, is the demented killer clown. Reminds me a little bit of the killer clowns from outer space movie. That kind of head. So if you wanted to assemble Bonzo as a regular clown, he could be an NPC that needs to be saved, maybe, by the party. Or if you want to put him together as the killer clown with the meat cleaver, he could be the antagonist uh, for a boss battle, maybe, or the climax of a modern horror adventure. Next up we have Sparg. He's an Illyrian agent, and he's carrying an oversized calculator in his left hand and a pistol in his right hand. And right off the bat, he made me think of a character in a Traveler game who does all the accounting for a band of spacefaring smugglers. And now we'll get into the Pathfinder line for a minute, starting off with Baba Yaga. In Pathfinder, she is the Queen of the Witches, and this figure comes in three pieces. You get the bulk of the model, the body, the head, and her right arm that's carrying a broom as a single piece. And then you've got her left arm and a bundle of, looks like bundle of wood that goes on her back. Now, I'm not a big Pathfinder guru, but I'm betting that the bundle of wood gets sprung up into her hut. There was a little bit of cleaning needed on the figure, but nothing that was excessive. Assembly goes pretty easy. The arm fits into place just fine, and then the bundle of wood just sticks onto her back, so really no issues there. Now, as far as uses, if you're playing Pathfinder and you want to use her as an NPC, she's a very high-level NPC. I believe she's 20-plus level, and you could use her for that. If you wanted to use her as a player character, I think she would be outstanding as a witch, which pretty much is what she is, for Warhammer Fantasy roleplay now that you can have witches and warlocks as player characters. I think she'd be great as that, just an ugly old crone that's with the party. Or you could use her as an enemy NPC in any kind of fantasy game. So, I like the figure a lot. I'm going to probably get some use out of it in my Warhammer Fantasy roleplay game, uh, but all around pretty good with nice detail. Our next Pathfinder mini is a female called Raiko, and she's a ninja. And single piece miniature here, she's got a couple swords on her back and a double bladed weapon in each of her hands that she's going to slice people up with. The top half of the model seems a little more slight to me than the bottom half, but maybe that's just because she is wearing puffy pants and that just gives that kind of look where she's slighter on top than she is on the bottom. Now, as much of a fan that I am for finding alternate or additional uses of miniatures, I don't really think that I'll drop her into my Warhammer Fantasy Battle Dark Elf Army as an assassin, just because she doesn't really fit that look to me. But as a ninja or assassin type figure in a fantasy role-playing game, or maybe even using her in a superhero game as a ninja type character, I think she'd be good for that. 
So we're going to move into the Dark Heaven Legends line now. And first up we have a Barrel White Guardian. And in this blister you get five pieces that go into the assembly of the figure. You get the body, the torso and legs of the figure, and then you also get a shield, a sword arm, and two different heads. My first thought for this figure is to use it as a White King for my Vampire Counts army for Warhammer Fantasy Battle. And he will just barely, with a little bit of clipping on the base, fit onto a 20 millimeter square base. So for me, that's perfect. That's exactly where he's going to go. Now you do have a choice between an armored head or a helmeted head and just a skull head. And then with the sword and the shield, you don't really have any choices. You just put them into place and you could rotate them a little bit if you wanted to move them around a bit. Now, while I have a very specific use for the miniature, you could also use it as the leader of a band of skeletons in a dungeon adventure or something like that, or as a white, obviously. But I think it'll paint up pretty easily. There's a lot of armor on the figure, so a dark color and a wash, and I think the armor's probably done there. So he should do fine in whatever game you have a need for a heavily armored skeleton warrior. Next up, we have a barbed devil, and this figure comes in three pieces. You get the tail his right arm, and then the rest of the figure is all one piece. Assembly is pretty easy, but you can see in the video there were some mold lines that were visible that need to be worked on, and there's also some extra bits of metal from the casting process that need to be cleaned up. Uh, detail on the figure is good. It is very obviously a devil figure that you could use in D&D or Pathfinder. You could probably even drop it in as a demon or an alternate kind of demon in a game of Warhammer Fantasy roleplay. And last up for this episode, we have a figure from the Warlord Sisterhood of the Blade faction. This is a two-piece miniature where you get most of the figure as the rider and the sable as a single piece, and then her right arm that's carrying a sword is a separate piece, but it fits right into place at the shoulder. As you can see in the video, this is a female warrior who's riding a giant sable, so a little bit of unique factor there. It's not your typical mount for a warrior who's going to ride into battle. And I think that even though she's wearing what appears to be fairly heavy armor, she could make a very unique female ranger type character for whatever game allows you to have mounts that are giant sables, so probably not Warhammer fantasy roleplay so much, but probably okay in Pathfinder and D&D. &D. Uh, but anyway, I think she might make a pretty good female ranger that's riding something other than a horse like you'd normally see. Alright everybody, thanks for tuning in to this episode of Reaper Minis TV. We'll see you next time.